This video demonstrates a predictable and reliable method for carrying out a pulpotomy on a deciduous molar. The subsequent restoration with a preformed stainless steel crown is also covered. On the screen, you can see a selection of materials and instruments that you may find useful in undertaking this procedure. It must be noted that clinically, when undertaking this procedure, local anaesthetic is required. Rubber dam should be used when undertaking a pulpotomy. This will protect the airway, increase patient comfort, and reduce the chance of bacterial ingress. Thread floss through the holes on the clamp. This accommodates retrievability in the event of aspiration. Gently try the clamp on the tooth. If you are happy with this, it is now time to fit the rubber dam. Punch the appropriate holes in the rubber dam. For this exercise, this will be the tooth undergoing the pulpotomy and those immediately adjacent to it. There are many techniques for rubber dam placement. For ease, a split dam technique can be used. For this, the interproximal dam between adjacent holes is cut. This is particularly useful if the tooth is to be restored with a preformed metal crown. This will be demonstrated in your practical. Ensure the dam is fully seated by flossing through the contacts. The dam can further be secured using rubber wedging material. Gain access to the caries using the diamond fissure burr within the high speed handpiece. Ensure that you establish clean margins circumscribing the cavity. Deepen the cavity and remove the caries overlying the pulp chamber. Widen the cavity sufficiently to ensure access to the pulp horns. These are usually located in the corners of the tooth. Gain access to the pulp chamber using the high-speed handpiece with the diamond burr. Ensure that all the overhanging dentine is removed. At this point, you should observe bleeding from the pulp. If bleeding does not occur and the pulp appears necrotic, then it can be assumed that the pulp is non-vital and a pulpotomy would not be the appropriate course of treatment. Remove the coronal pulp with a large rosehead burr in a slow handpiece. Alternatively, a large excavator can be used. The pulp stumps should be visible. Care must be taken when removing the pulp tissue overlying the cavity floor, as this is very thin and overzealous preparation can lead to iatrogenic perforation. When you are happy that the inflamed pulp has been removed, it is time to achieve hemostasis. For this, place a cotton pellet soaked in ferric sulfate onto the remaining pulpal tissue and canal entrances. Use tweezers to deliver the cotton pellet into the access cavity, pressing firmly. Leave the ferric sulfate in contact with the pulpal tissue for one to two minutes. Gently remove the cotton pellets and observe hemostasis. Fill the pulp chamber with a zinc oxide eugenol material. Use a flat plastic and a plugger for packing this.